this is a Transportation TV News special report. Freight Partnership 5, AASHTO and FHWA's biannual meeting. This is, of course, the fifth of these freight partnership meetings. The people in this room have a vested interest in America's multimodal freight transportation network, which in 2011 was credited with moving 17.6 billion tons of goods valued at more than $18.8 trillion. You know, we now have over 30 states that have an office of freight or a dedicated freight lead in their departments, and that's reflected uh, in the fact that we have 32 of the State Departments of Transportation represented at this meeting. So I think it's, it's absolutely no surprise that freight is an issue that is in the mainstream. It is a mainstream issue because the nation's freight network touches every aspect of American life, from the food we eat to the clothes we wear and the cars we drive. And it's an aging system made up of trains, planes, commercial trucks, ports, roads, rails, pipelines, and waterways. And in his keynote address, U.S. DOT Deputy Secretary John Picari said that by 2050, 100 million more Americans will depend on it. So we're going to go from about 317 million people to well over 400 million. Think about our transportation network today, uh, and in particular, think about the goods movement part of it uh, and the bottlenecks that we have today. And then you stir in 100 million people uh, and the additional 8 billion extra tons of goods per year that those 100 million people uh, will require. Uh, and then you start to see the sense of urgency that we feel uh, about freight movement. Creating a long-term national freight strategy and how to pay for it are just two of the many important issues being addressed here. Leo Penning, Ashto's program director for intramodal activities, is the co-founder of this biannual event, which has been bringing freight stakeholders together since 2005. You see more freight plans, you see more freight projects, uh, and of course the real uh, demonstration of success is the freight provisions in MAP 21. MAP 21, or the Moving Ahead for Progress in the 21st Century Act, signed into law last year, was the first surface transportation bill to include provisions for freight. In an effort to persuade states to create freight plans, with projects designed to improve freight mobility, lawmakers boosted the federal share for such projects from 80 percent to 90 percent for non-interstate projects and from 90 to 95 percent for projects on the interstate system. MAP 21 also calls for the establishment of a national freight policy and requires the Secretary of Transportation to develop a national freight strategic plan, something that's never been done before. It's going to take an extraordinary effort, um, and it is going to uh, require utilizing the full capacity of every mode, uh, highways, rail, uh, the marine highway, um, um, the connection to intermodal facilities, uh, airports. Uh, it really is about being strategic about how we organize the system and invest in it. Illinois DOT Secretary Ann Schneider chairs the National Freight Advisory Committee, a 47-member group representing all transportation modes and interests. Her group's goal will be to work with U.S. DOT Secretary Anthony Fox on the development of the freight provisions to be included in the next surface transportation bill. As the chairperson, part of my role will be to keep the process moving along quickly and trying to look for short-term gains and opportunities where we can provide that um, much-needed input to the secretary as he engages with Congress on um, the success that are built to MAP 21. The clock is ticking. MAP 21 expires on September 30th, 2014. Meanwhile, states are developing their own strategic freight plans to more seamlessly and efficiently move goods within their borders. Overall, we had over uh, close to 700 participants in this process. And so, um, again, engaging the private sector was absolutely key. So now as we go forward, we're now looking at the investment element of our plan. Bider says getting the general public and private sector to buy in made Florida's freight plan a reality. He says the same support must be generated behind a national freight plan, because ultimately 
We're talking about American jobs, the nation's economy, and the future of transportation in our country. That's our special report. Thanks for watching.